Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Alonzo Duraldi, Jenna Bush. Uh, Doctor Who season 34, is that what we're saying? Season 178. That's, yeah, as you like it. Uh, <laughs> doing episodes two and three today uh, because of Labor Day. So uh, the episode two being inside. Into the Dalek. Into the Dalek. I believe that's right. And episode three, Robot of Sherwood. Uh, take a look at these clips. No damsels in distress, no Pritchett castles, no such thing as Robin Hood. Can you be so sure he is not the real thing? Because he can't be. What do you say, outlaw? A final reckoning? So, okay, uh, this is my first of the recaps, and this is also the first season I've ever watched Doctor Who. Welcome. I, I, thank you. It's <laughs> exciting. I, you know, I, I just, I felt like a show that with this long a history, I couldn't just hop in the middle, that I had to go back to the beginning, and that was just never going to happen. And then people kept saying, oh, no, no, a new Doctor, perfect time to hop in. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm now three episodes into a show that's been on for a million years. Well, then I'm definitely <laughs> interested to hear what you think, because it is, I mean, I started with the Reimagined series, okay. um, and then went back and watched pretty much everything. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't sleep. So, <laughs> but uh, but a new doctor is a really good time to jump in. So I'm curious what you think of him. Okay, well, um, you know, I'm a Peter Capaldi fan from way back, and yeah. from like local hero, uh, and I loved obviously him in in the Loop and stuff. So so you know, I was excited. Like, okay, I've heard of this guy. I'm in. You know, uh, and the show itself is entertaining enough. I mean, I I know enough about Doctor Who to realize that there are references being made that I don't get. But I know that they're there, so right. that's a start, I guess. And um, you know, I, I, I kind of like the I like the sense of humor to the show. You know, for example, with the episode three, Robot of Sherwood, uh, I was kind of thinking, oh god, I, I was so not interested in Robin Hood. And then neither is the Doctor, as it turns out. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we're on the same page here, you know. And and I know the Daleks are a big deal, but that that was actually the first Dalek hey, episode I've ever watched. You this are my indeed. Dalek dress. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Like I got the I, I got the notion that a, a Dalek that is that, it, that doesn't want to exterminate is a mutant Dalek yes, somehow. So. Yes. Uh, so okay, let's go back to episode two. Uh, uh, take us through that one. Okay. So um, this is this is sort of interesting. The way that all right. So we're talking about whether or not the Doctor is a good man. Right. And whether he can save a creature that is purely evil. If he can save that, he can save himself. He's Doctor's had a rough time lately. <laughs> um, he's he, there have been genocides. There he's had a lot of moral stuff to deal with. Mm -hmm. And after the last um, the last regeneration, he's starting to question himself. Peter Capaldi's a very 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 different doctor than we've seen. Um, he's as they said, not the boyfriend doctor. Right. Um, he is. He's a uh, he's grumpy. He's a grumpy <laughs> doctor, and I love him. Like yeah. to, to be fair, I absolutely love him. Um, but he's he's very different, and I think this episode was a little bit odd. I'm not I'm not saying I have a problem with it, but he was really sort of cavalier about killing people or people dying. Sure, yeah. So, and I'm I'm curious what you think about him. Well, I I liked the fact that the protagonist of a show, you know, when when something else is looking into his soul, finds that there is some blackness there. I think a lot of American shows probably wouldn't allow for that kind of ambiguity, at least not in a show that is ostensibly. I mean, it's not a kid show, but this is a family-friendly program, right, you know. Right. Um, so I liked that. I thought that was kind of a cool notion, and I liked the whole sort of um, fantastic voyage setup of, of being shrunk down and, and, and running around inside this mechanical slash, you know, organic hybrid. Um, I'm kind of interested in Clara's the love interest at the school, the, the... Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink, yes, the mystery <laughs> veteran. Um, but you know, I, I don't have a lot to compare it to. So I mean, it was a it was a fine hour of TV. You know, I was I was engaged, I was into it. But I I, I don't have the larger context to put it in. But as far and, and I'm not a big sci-fi person as far as watching TV. But um, you know, I, I I thought the stories were linear in a way, and they they made sense. And and uh, you know, I I thought I was swept up into them, and so I didn't feel like I was like, okay, can we get on with this? You know. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I personally love about sci-fi is that you can um, you can address very large things. 
things um, in a way that you normally couldn't. Um, sure. You couldn't with a regular narrative show. Um, so one of the themes that seems to be sort of swirling, and now I could be wrong here, but swirling around this season um, seems to be afterlife um, religion of some sort, which is sort of odd. Hmm. And let's, you know, that's a subject that's really kind of makes, <laughs> yeah, makes you squirm a little. It's a little squelchy. <laughs> um, but there, but there is. We're talking about the afterlife. We don't know who Missy is. Um, we do have a character that appears in Heaven, whatever that is, right. and gets tea, which is you know nice. Sure, that's great to As know. There's do. tea and cakes. <laughs> Sounds great. British Heaven. Right, <laughs> British Heaven. Um, Chocolate hobnobs. <laughs> I really like that. Um, the other, the other theme this season seems to be robots because mm. they're all over the place, mechanical beings. Yes, totally fine with that. Um, but it, it, there are a lot of them for the first three episodes. Um, so it was the Doctor can be cold sometimes. He can be incredibly warm sometimes. And but this this particular episode, he was just all about like get over it and move on, which. Mm. You know, is an interesting thing because you know there's you can grieve and then you can get over things and move on and at some point you have to shake people up and say like okay and now continue your life. Right. So um, it was a little fast to do that when her <laughs> brother was just obliterated. Whipping through these seven uh, Kubler Ross right. stages, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but but it is interesting. It's almost like he's trying to deal with himself and to push himself past a lot of things that happened. Um, River Song not being there anymore. All of this stuff. Um, in terms of Mr. Pink, mm. that was sort of interesting um, because companions have had love interests certainly before, um, whether or not they were interested in the Doctor. Mm. Um, so, it, I, I'm assuming he's going to end up on the TARDIS. I mean, he kind of has to. Um, they, they seem to be suggesting that. Yeah. Yeah, and they're giving him quite a backstory. They're giving him a bit of a mystery. So he is. Um, He's a veteran. Mm -hmm. He's obviously killed someone not in battle. Right. Or someone's died not in battle. He's crying in front of his class, and everyone seems to think he's a lady killer. Mm. So, and that's sort of interesting, too. Um, I, I like him already. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to see where this is going. Now, you, you brought up something about the, the sort of the theme of the season, which was something I wanted to ask about. Um, do we obviously each episode is discrete in terms of you know, beginning, middle, end? Right. I mean, I assume there will be two parters, or whatever. But for the most part, they're all kind of standalone. But are we also meant to be looking for larger arcs that will take us through? Yeah, there are definitely larger arcs um, in the in the series. Um, most seasons have something big that you're following. So, and I, I could totally be wrong about this particular theme. I'm not 100% sure that's what it is, but that's what it's looking like so far, mm -hmm. I think. Um, the other thing is usually the relationship between the companion and the doctor. Mm -hmm. So now Clara, I've said this before, and this sort of goes across both, both episodes. I've said this before, but Clara has been a little problematic for me. Um, I really like Jenna Coleman. When she was introduced, I thought she was amazing. I thought she had incredible chemistry with Matt Smith. So I know I like her. Mm -hmm. I know that that's a thing. I like her. Um, I think it was very much squandered in the last in the second half of the last season. Um, and now it's almost like they read the comments and they listened to the fans. I don't know if that's true, but that's what it looks like. And they're building her up again and they're, they're trying to give her all this personality, which I love, except that it's sort of like, where did that come from? You do Taekwondo? Wait a second. I don't, because if you did that before, that would be super great to know. And you probably could have used that earlier. Right, right. You know. <laughs> So I'm a little. What do you think of Clara? I'm, as somebody who I, just started. You know, I, 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 she's got spunk, but she you does. know, I mean, I, I, I like that great. She's got that great speech in the in the season opener about not, you know, about who her posters were and and not being just sort of the love struck companion. Um, you know, and so and, and I, I think she's been she's interestingly resilient. I, I like I I love the fact that. Um, she, you know, in the Robin Hood episode, is 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 established to be the leader of the group because she's yeah. the one who's not squabbling. Um, they give her a few too many moments where she's kind of satisfied with herself, mm -hmm. uh, like where she tricks the sheriff of Nottingham into revealing his plan. Like th that was shrewd, and I saw her mechanics of doing that. But then to have her say that that is what she is doing or what she just did, yeah. like, okay, <laughs> don't pat yourself on the back so much. Let's move on here, you know. So there, and, and I, that's obviously in the writing, you know, and and how they decide to create her. So. I think maybe they could tone down the Jiminy, I'm, I'm I'm smarter than you are kind of stuff. <laughs> but at the same time, she is smarter than a lot of the people that they encounter, and she does have good ideas in the in the Dalek episode as well. Yeah, I think that largely comes out of Amy Pond, who was a companion before this, who was very smart, 
really good, incredibly capable. And you know, you do find with a lot of the companions, even back to Rose, um, which you should watch, by the way. Okay. I, I, people Catch have been giving me lists of old episodes <laughs> right, I need right. to watch. And there are so. definitely specifics. That, and guys, if you want to put that in the comments, that would be really cool. Watch episodes <laughs> you should watch, and then we'll, we'll harass I, I, about I, it I, I, I'm recapping like four other shows here, so I may not get to them <laughs> until 2016. Well, you know, we'll just... Knock yourself out. But we'll, we'll harass. <laughs> um, but she sort of had this, I'll run into danger kind of a thing, or mm. like, oh, wow, this crazy thing happened, and um, yeah, sure, let's keep going. <laughs> like, where would you like to go? I don't know, somewhere dangerous. <laughs> so I, I kind of, I mean, I like her now. I just think it's a weird sort of rushed thing, which, you know, compared to last season, mm -hmm. the second half of last season. Um, is, it, is it usual that companions stick around while doctors regenerate, or do they usually kick off new doctors and new companions together? It, not always, not always. Oh. So she she was with Matt Smith. Right. Um, so it, it just all sort of depends on everyone's contracts. That's what ah. it depends on, I'm <laughs> guessing, when everyone wants to leave the show. Um, but I I am liking her this season, So and I'm very happy that I'm liking her this season. Awesome. Um, there was a little Star Trek uh, reference in, um, in last week's episode. Uh, considering today is the 48th anniversary of oh, Star Trek, right. which is kind of cool. <laughs> yes, fun facts from Jenna. Um, but yeah, so the resistance is futile. Oh right, yes. Okay, yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah, uh, yeah that yeah, was yeah. that was in there twice, which I, I thought, thought so. that was that was kind of a cute nod. <laughs> um, should we move on to the next episode? Uh, well, unless I mean, there's something else. I kind of feel like we've been double dipping all along, but sure. We yes. sort of have. We sort of have. <laughs> um, this was one of those funny episodes that you know just. Because, um, I mean, most show, most sci-fi shows do this, where you have your serious, 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 and then lighthearted and fun. Uh, your bride of arachnida or whatever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and look, I, I, love the, I love the costume. Mm -hmm. I think I would like to go into the closets in the TARDIS <laughs> and see where they get all the magical jewelry. The Ren Faire getup. <laughs> I know. Or, did, or does Clara just have that? Well, <laughs> no, she, around, she right? ran in and she said, where do, I want, you know, where do you want to go? So it had to be in the TARDIS. So does she, like, keep her cosplay stuff in the TARDIS? <laughs> Because that's awesome. Because you never know when you're going to wind up in 14th century England. Right, uh, makeup and hair extensions. It's, it's <laughs> lovely. It's lovely. Um, I really liked the guy who played Robin Hood. I think he was really funny. And I did really appreciate the spoon versus sword. Yes, that was that was un unusual and it, clever. And it well made me done. happy. And, and I liked the callback to that fight at the end. You know? Right, right. Um, yeah, I, uh, I also, there was also a little callback to um, the Disney Robin Hood with the, the arrow, the, the archery contest. Oh, right, right, right. And that he's wearing a big floppy hat. Yes. Just like they did in the but, cartoon. But, you know, I'm never sure. You know, it's funny, there's so many Robin Hoods now, and I've never read the yeah. original book. I, ne I never know which version's being referenced half the time now, or if the Disney's doing somebody else. Um, I, it, it, I mean, that was a really crappy costume. A so giant bad. hat, like, that's it. That's <laughs> so bad. You're going to enter a contest with a giant hat, and no one's going to recognize you. That's okay, sort great. of like the little the little tiny, um, you know, Zorro masks. Like, this is true. I'm different, Lone Ranger mask. <laughs> I'm a different person entirely. You don't recognize me at all. But I, I did I did like how nonchalant the arrow contest got with yeah. people not looking and just, you know. Yes. It was kind of it was kind of ridiculous and awesome. Because like look if you're going in and Mark Gaddis wrote this one which is really cool. And if you go into a Doctor Who episode and you recognize right away that it's one of the silly fun ones, right. then you just enjoy it. I mean yeah. I, I, I kind of loved that. Um, there were things like the Taekwondo where I was like I what? She knows what now? Right. And you know, I sort of, I sort of felt that way about the, um, the slap at the week before. It's like, really? What? Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I'm on board. No, that, that's the problem. Once you create canon, you know, you really can't muss about with it because then suddenly, well, then how come in episode eight last year she didn't do the? Yeah. Blah, 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 why didn't you know? do the taekwondo, right. Clara? Just tell me. <laughs> um, okay. So the other thing is the, um, the arrow, the gold arrow, which, by the way, I think would be kind of. Heavy. I mean, I have not lifted quantities of gold, but from what I, I know, mm, that's not light. True, a bar, yeah. But anyway, so we... Maybe it was we, hollow. Right. So we need all the gold, right. and we just have to shoot it so it sticks on the outside of the ship, and then... But if that's the case, then why were we pouring it into things... I don't know, because science. Know. Yeah, I, because I, I, science. Yeah, I kind of blah, blah, blah gingered that part. I was like, yeah. okay, sure, whatever. That's you know, great. and I, I think a lot of times with shows, if you love it, you're willing to do that. And yeah. I was willing to do that. But guys, if there is some kind of thing that I'm unaware of, science-wise, <laughs> and you want to let us know in the comments, I would love to hear it. I mean, it was still fun, It was, yeah. just, but I was just sort of like, what? If, okay. if Bibbs were here, he would say, because reasons. Because reasons. So, I, yeah, know. well, we, we also, we've done other shows together, Bibbs and I, so <laughs> we, we both say because reasons, so <laughs> I appreciate. Um, and, okay, so the other thing is the promised land, and the robots are all looking for the promised land. Mm -hmm. any, any speculation about that? 
Oh God, I have no idea. Is this, is this, is this a seed for something bigger that's coming? Uh, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that it is. Um, which Robot is Nirvana? Robot Nirvana. We have Heaven with Missy. We don't know who Missy is. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that that's, that's why I'm sort of sensing that sort of theme. Um, gotcha. And, you know, like I said about the religion before, I mean, it may very well, because one of the things that, because I thought, oh, well, we're not going to, we're not going to go to, there we may reference sort of a sort of a religion but we're not really going to go there we're right. just going to talk about this promised land this heaven with missy that is another dimension or something to do with the inside of the doctor's head or people he sees something like that but they do mention i've seen in um in the the earlier episode i've seen divinity and you're like oh are we are we doing that they might go into the star trek 5 direction yeah, you know yeah, kind yeah. of a vaguely Mushy god-ish thing yeah. without offending anyone specifically. Yeah, because sci-fi, like you know, it's, 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 see, it seemed a little weird to me. Yeah. Like, and there's, I there's the passing nod, and then they keep walking. Right, you know? right. I think maybe that's good. I, yeah, which is fun. <laughs> plenty. I, let's let's not get mucked up into into the into the divine too much. Against, yeah, into yeah. So spiritual taffy. It's it's maybe best. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm so I'm curious what you're thinking about about where the doctor may be going, coming as somebody oh, who's man. like completely <laughs> fresh to. Uh, to you know, I I don't I honestly don't, I mean I don't know what a what a normal doctor trajectory would be. So I mean I'm really coming into this very cold. Uh, there isn't one. Yeah, uh, you know I mean <laughs> I I think obviously he has you know. They, they, they tease in the first episode, there's things he doesn't remember, there's, uh, you know, that, his, that, that, that he's acting differently and that, you know, there's a reason that he's been reconstituted, regenerated to look older or to, you know, and have this specific lines. body. Exactly right, which uh, I've heard some people suggest because Capaldi was on the show once as another character, uh -huh. is that going to be a callback or a complicated way to sort of justify why he's here now when he was there then and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> I, I'm just sort of letting back, laying back and letting it just tell me. They go have a wiki the place, for this. It's know. maybe... It, it's helpful. <laughs> I've, I'm on it a lot. Um, okay. Well, yeah, and it is interesting because they, he was on um, The Fires of Pompeii, I believe was the episode, and, um, and so was Karen Gillan. Ah. Who they never referenced her appearance, but it would be interesting if they referenced. Now is she his. lizard lesbian or no, no? No, she was a last companion, Amy oh. Pond. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah, gotcha. lizard lesbian. I like that, <laughs> Madame Vastra. <Yes>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, um, we there have been a, a number of things, and we mentioned it in the last episode, but a number of things about the kiss and whether or not. They kind of cheesed out a little bit, oh, right. making the the kiss between two married people who are clearly in love be just about. Oh, I've got extra oxygen for you, so <laughs> here you go. This is the only delivery system I can think of. Instead of saying like, "Hey, maybe they're in love and married and would just kiss." Look, I've seen more gay kiss misdirects over the I last know. couple of decades. At this point, it's like, fine, baby steps, whatever you have to do, people. I know, I know, but they're so cute, and I know. Um, I read a lot of and the comments. And BBC has those like shows where like there's hot gay cops making yeah. out and stuff. So you know, they they they, they know who their audience is on Doctor. Yeah, like, please, you know. yeah, so, so totally. Maybe maybe we get over that. And I know people in the comments last week. First of all, I I was not watching BBC, as I said in many of the comments. I was watching Channel Four, which is why I was seeing breaks. So forgive me for that. <laughs> um, but I was hearing a lot of people say that they're tired of seeing Jenny and Madame Vastra and Strax and that it's getting silly. I, I happen to love them, but I do see what they're saying. So, guys, if you have reasons for that, I would love to hear about them in the comments. I, you know, I thought they were the, my first time seeing them, obviously. I, 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 I could see where maybe they're a, they're, a, they're a limited dosage kind of thing, but sure, every so often I, th I could see where they'd be entertaining. Yeah, I, I really love them. Definitely worth watching their earlier appearances, and there were um, little tiny um, webisodes oh, okay. with them that were really, really cute. I will put that on the list of things I'm not going to be watching anytime soon, <laughs> but I will one of these days tackle it. All right, so Jenna, we have a whole, well, how many more in this series? Many. Ten? Nine? Twelve? I should know that, and yet I don't. Bunches. I don't want to think about the end. And we will be discussing all of them, so <laughs> come back. Thanks for joining us.